What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I have spent decades trying to find the optimal way to get my body loose and moving and ready to play the double bass. This is so important because if you start off tense, you're probably going to remain tense, and that's when back problems, shoulder problems, tendonitis, all sorts of things can creep up. I attended a class with the wonderful bass teacher Paul Ellison, and he went through a series of steps that I've been implementing before playing the bass. It's done wonders for me, so if you're looking to stay loose and relax and approach the bass right, this video is for you. This first move is called Gorilla Pose, and to paraphrase Paul, it's a nice, fun way to find out where we are in the body and how to move from foot to foot and move toward the middle and front of the foot. These are from my notes from this class with Paul, but I'm not always the greatest note taker and there are many approaches, so if you've got thoughts of your own or other approaches, leave them in the comments below. In the gorilla pose, your upper body should be at a slight forward bent, and I call this an athletic or active pose, kind of like you're about to shoot a basket. And there's this folding aspect to this pose. You take your hands and put them on your hip bones and actually just put your butt back so that it actually sticks out a little bit. This is always a lot of fun when you do it with a group of students. And then let your arms come forward and your shoulders should be nice and relaxed and free swinging. And then start pivoting your torso just a little bit from left to right. And when you move from side to side, you can start to feel your torso and your navel moving in the opposite direction as your arms. It's kind of a cool feeling. And you'll start to get this feeling of this circular and just fluid gesture in your arms. And this is really like a great way to just approach string playing in general. Having curvature to your motions, having, as David and Alan Moore calls them, elegant gestures, and not thinking about right angles and straight lines. Having this sort of circularity in your body is really helpful for bass playing, all aspects of bass playing, I think. So you've got this going, and then Paul had people in this class do what he called the bear walk, I believe, and it's really fun to see a whole group of people doing this, but you got this gorilla pose, you got the folding, you're on the balls of your feet, not the heels, and then you just start to walk around the room and feel your arms move toward the foot that's about to go down, and this is just a really kind of cool way to move around. And whether you stand or sit, this is a really excellent way just to get that fluidity all through your body to feel like your feet are part of the motions that end up playing bass. I know it seems weird to think about playing bass with your feet, but if you really can feel being grounded and then also having this fluidity, it just does wonders for your approach to the bass. This third exercise is releasing the sacrum, and this is helpful even for young people who don't have a fully developed sacrum down here, but you just start in gorilla pose. And to borrow from the yoga world, and I'm not well-versed in yoga, but I believe this is called bubbling spring or bounce on bubbling spring. You just kind of bounce up and down, and again, you're angled a bit forward in this athletic pose. Let your heels come up and down as you do this, and you can actually exhale and make a low sound and hear the pulsations. <sighs> You want your spine to be straight, and you can even do a little chin tuck as your head is on top of your spine, just feeling it balanced on top of your spine. And everything should be moving here. Your torso, your arms, your legs, ankles, knees, and quads are securing you, holding you in a secure way. And you just keep this up for one minute. And if you have one minute, or if I have one minute, this is one of the best things to do right before you go out on stage. Does it look odd? Perhaps, but oh my goodness, I just feel everything releasing. And I go to the gym pretty much every day. I work out, but I find that, and I, and I do stretching and all sorts of things, but I find that this in particular just gets my body dialed in for the sensitive nature of playing a string instrument and for really just kind of checking in with my various muscles and groups and thinking about alignment and approaching things in a healthy way. And this is beneficial whether you sit or stand, and I do both. I usually practice practice standing. When I sub in the San Francisco Symphony, I'm sitting pretty much always. But regardless, feeling your whole body like this, whether you stand or sit, I find it super beneficial. Then there's the reverse jellyfish. You just bring your arms up without your wrists dropping and you wiggle the fingers. There's a little pronation in this motion, so you're wiggling, but you're also pronating right around here. And you should kind of feel the air moving between your fingers. Just kind of feel that space between the fingers. The fingers aren't tight and close together. They're nice and loose and spaced out. Now go to the reverse and shake. Go this direction. Go back to the original. Get your whole body going as you do this. You can combine these exercises. 
And that, whether I have 30 seconds or a minute or a bit more than that, this is really getting me optimally charged for bass playing. If I have a bit more time, this fifth exercise called throwing the frisbee, and I'm borrowing from Paul, I can't remember exactly what he said, that was in my notes, but you start with your right hand and just think about what it would feel like to hold a frisbee in your hand. If you hold it too tight, the frisbee's not gonna leave. If you hold it too loose, it's gonna drop on the ground. And that just right Goldilocks kind of approach, it's great for thinking about the bow and the left hand too. But we'll start with the right hand and think about what you do if you were throwing a frisbee. You go back and then you turn your body, your torso and everything would turn from the side about halfway through, your arm starts to move and then it extends at the very end and you just let that frisbee go. And you can then get a left hand frisbee going and you're getting into this kind of Tai Chi clouds moving kind of approach and this sort of motion, again, kind of tying into David Allen Moore, the wonderful University of Southern California and LA Phil bassist and teacher. Uh, he, elegant gestures is a phrase I remember him talking about. And just thinking about that and these arms originating from the center of gravity from your torso, letting these go out. I find that that's a great way to just kind of ease into playing with the bow. And I've done an entire video on setting yourself up right for the bow where we go through this in more detail. So check that out here and we'll see you in the next one.